Good morning and welcome to worship on this Thursday the 19th of May, the Feast of St Dunstan, Archbishop of Canterbury in the 10th century. He often prayed as a monk through the creation of precious liturgical artefacts for which he became the patron saint of goldsmiths. And the legend says he was visited by the devil whilst working on a piece and he tweaked the devil's nose with hot tongs. He died in 988. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Psalm 57 Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for in you my soul takes refuge. In the shadow of your wings I will take refuge until the destroying storms pass by. I cry to God most high, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. He will send down from heaven and save me. He will put to shame those who trample me. God will send forth his steadfast love and his faithfulness. I lie down among lions that greedily devour human prey. Their teeth are spears and arrows, their tongues sharp swords. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. They set a net for my steps, my soul was bowed down. They dug a pit in my path, but they have fallen into it themselves. My heart is steadfast, O God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing and make melody. Awake, my soul, awake, O harp and lyre, I will awaken the dawn. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your steadfast love is as high as the heavens, your faithfulness extends to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, let your glory be over all the earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Tender God, gentle protector in time of trouble, pierce the gloom of despair, and give us with all your people the song of freedom and the shout of praise in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 5. After this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, Follow me. And he got up, left everything, and followed him. Then Levi gave a great banquet for him in his house, and there was a large crowd of tax collectors and others sitting at the table with them. The Pharisees and their scribes were complaining to his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have come not to call the righteous, but sinners. To repentance. Nowadays, know it or not, a tax man could be living next door to you, a government bureaucrat who wouldn't stand out because of the job they do. It wasn't like that under Roman colonial administration in first century Palestine, though. The job of tax officers then was to collect money directly from local inhabitants. The Romans decided how much per head needed to be collected, but the job was done by a native person who spoke the local language. Roman soldiers protected the cash collected, but could be called on to act as enforcers if anyone tried avoiding. Wealth was drained from the regions to enrich the powerful or invested in prestige projects of little benefit to the inhabitants. No wonder then that tax collectors were resented, if not hated, by fellow countrymen for siding with the colonisers and doing nicely from it. Tax collectors charged an administrative fee to each taxpayer, 
and whatever the official amount might be, it was difficult to regulate. They could charge more, accept bribes from anyone wanting to postpone paying their dues. But that was it. More reason for them being resented and hated. As with the story of Zacchaeus, the tax collector, it's Jesus who makes the approach to Levi and is seen to do so at his place of work. Speaking to one person nobody else wants to talk to. We don't know what else Jesus said to him, but the bottom line is, follow me. The next thing we hear is that Jesus has followed Levi to his home to eat with him, just as happened with Zacchaeus. Levi invites all his hated colleagues to join the meal. We can only wonder what they talked about. In the case of Zacchaeus, the outcome is an act of restorative justice. He reimburses people he's defrauded. Levi packs in the job completely on the spot and becomes the disciple we know as Matthew. He can read and write, remember and organise things systematically. It's no wonder the first gospel was named after him, as its storytelling has elements of order reflecting a tidier mind at work. The actions of Jesus hanging out with people shunned by the religious authorities for betraying their culture and their compatriots doesn't escape criticism. Jesus is sure he's where his father wants him to be, calling sinners to repentance. Let me interpret this for you in a way we may connect with a little more immediately today. When we sin, we cause suffering to ourselves and others. To repent is to rethink and change direction. Jesus aims his ministry at those whose behaviour and mindset causes suffering and challenges them to realise there is another way they can travel. Quitting an oppressive exploitative system to make a fresh start in life, as Levi and Zacchaeus did, is a key example of a faithful response to the word Jesus proclaims. What about us? Could we? Would we? Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? We pray for God's grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That we may draw other people to the fire of your love, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Have compassion, O Lord, on the sick and suffering, and all who suffer from the ravages of war. Grant us your peace and healing for individuals and for the nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For your grace revealed in St. Dunstan, and for all that inspires us from his life, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in our fellowship with St. Dunstan and all the saints, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, you raised up Dunstan to be a true shepherd of the flock, a restorer of monastic life, and a faithful counsellor to those in authority. Give to all pastors the same gifts of your Holy Spirit, that they may be true servants of Christ and of all his people. 
We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. May Christ, our true and living Lord, risen from the dead, have mercy upon us and bless us, for he is good and loves all humankind. Amen.